Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Turquoise of Universal Ethics, and or my podcast if you are listening to an audio of this recording. I'm Carol, and um, a couple weeks or so ago I went back to the uh, intensive outpatient program, and um, I had to leave um, for the last uh, group session today because I got really uncomfortable. Um, I sometimes have to deal with therapists. They're human. They, um, they make mistakes and they don't always handle things the way they need to be handled. And I swear if, if, this, if this had happened to me maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, five, you know, one year ago, I don't know. I wasn't feeling too good last year, but I might have handled things better last year too than I might have handled them maybe 10 or 20 years ago. But um, I was in group today and um, the therapist uh, and I were, we had an exchange that was not very uh, comfortable. It was quite uh, traumatic. And I want to discuss the therapy exchange. And I didn't feel like it was very therapeutic. I felt like it was really, um, really combative, you know, just really um, upsetting. And um, I got suggestions on a previous AI answer, I asked a question that they could have been more supportive because I might have been able to stay and work with them if they had treated me like like I had a legitimate issue going on, that I had some uh, stuff going through my head that I needed to kind of get help processing or get help uh, articulating. Um, it was a self-esteem group. I was in group therapy. I'll go ahead and uh, read it. Here's my question to the AI. I'll, I recommend iask.ai. It's a really cool website where you can free ask questions, ask free questions. I was in group therapy and the therapist called on me to answer a question when it was my turn, asking me what I found good about myself. You know, what is a positive trait about myself? And I had a hard time doing that, but I did come up with one idea and um, I said persistence because it was a positive thing that uh, someone I knew had told me and um, I said persistence and then she asked me why? why, why do you think persistence, you know, why do you say that Carol? And um, that upset me. I felt like she was challenging my answer. I was on the spot and I couldn't answer right away and there was a dead silence in the group. She told me I was taking up the group's time and making it, making things harder. I finally told her I couldn't answer the question and I couldn't think of anything. I also told her that her suggestion that I was taking up group's time wasn't helping my self-esteem at all. And uh, I kind of picked up a scoffing vibe, like she was like, oh God, oh Carol, you know. I was kind of picking up that vibe even though she wasn't really saying that verbally and um, I know that this therapist has a very low tolerance for any kind of negativity so um, I knew she was not gonna not gonna interact with me after that point you know she she's known to shut clients down when they're being negative and I was feeling her doing that so I left the room and um, I asked AI that question and this was their answer Understanding the dynamics of group therapy and emotional responses. <clears throat> maybe I'll put this um, on the uh, description of the video so you guys can maybe read along or you can understand it better. Context of group therapy. Group therapy is a form of psychotherapy where individuals share their experiences and feelings in a supportive environment guided by a trained therapist. In this setting, therapists often encourage participants to reflect on their strengths and weaknesses, which can sometimes lead to discomfort or emotional responses. Well, there it is. So I'm not, it's not me, you know, this is a, an issue I was 
I was dealing with. The role of persistence. Okay, um, I'm going to skip over a little bit to number three. Therapist inquiry and its impact. You can skip over too if it's on the description. When the therapist asked why, why you found persistence to be a positive attribute, her intention may have been to encourage deeper self-reflection and exploration of your feelings about this trait. Well, I didn't know what she wanted. However, such questions can sometimes feel like challenges rather than invitations for discussion, especially if one is already feeling vulnerable or under pressure in a group setting. You know, it was almost like she was saying, and then her, her tone of voice too, she was like, why do you think that's good? You know, kind of like, what do you have to say for yourself? Instead of, I'm interested in what you have to say. I don't know. It just felt like, like she was confronting me. Very confrontative vibe. The silence that followed your initial response can create an uncomfortable atmosphere, leading to increased anxiety or self-doubt. This situation might have made you feel scrutinized rather than supported, which can explain your upset reaction. Yeah, dead silence in the group. And she just kept asking me over and over again, why do you think it's persistent? And I just said, and I just said, you know what? I'm taking back my answer. I, I don't feel like I can uh, work with this. I, I feel uncomfortable. And she just kept asking me and asking me. And then she's like, you're taking up the group's time. So uh, perception... Perception of being challenged. Your perception that the therapist was challenging your answer is valid. It reflects how individuals interpret feedback based on their emotional state at that moment. In therapeutic settings, participants may feel exposed when discussing personal attributes or experiences, making them sensitive to perceived criticism or questioning. Now that, yeah, we, we kind of live in a society still where it isn't okay to brag. You know, I think we're, we're getting better. You know, I think our world is changing in that area. But um, probably because we're becoming more aware, aware of verbal abuse and put down. But, um, you know, it's it still needs a lot of work. Um, therapist comment about taking up the group's time could have added to your discomfort by implying that your struggle to articulate an answer was burdensome to others. Well, it was burdensome to her. I don't know how the other group members felt. They weren't saying anything. This kind of feedback can inadvertently reinforce feelings of inadequacy or negativity. I told her this is not helping my self-esteem. And she, again, she uh, continued to be very condescending, very uh, intolerant of my negativity. Whew. The response, difficulty in articulating thoughts. When you ultimately expressed that you couldn't think of anything further to say, it highlighted a common experience in therapy where individuals may feel overwhelmed by expectations. And I did. I felt like she was standing there with her hands on her hips, demanding an answer, and demanding an answer she wanted instead of my answers, both their own and those perceived from others. It's not unusual for someone in therapy to experience moments where they cannot articulate their thoughts clearly due to stress or emotional turmoil. And I, I didn't feel safe when she asked me that, especially in the way she did it, the therapist's scoff and labeling your, your inability to under, respond as negativity could be seen as dismissive rather than constructive. It was traumatic. Effective therapeutic communication should validate feelings while encouraging exploration without judgment. She was being very judgmental. Moving forward, strategies for future sessions. In group therapy sessions, Consider these strategies. Let's see. All right. I don't want to read this part, but um, they were talking about. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna re-ask the question. I'm gonna add something. Let's see. How else could she have asked me that question? Yeah, I asked AI this earlier, and. Um, I got some answers and they're, they're not here. They're kind of missing on this, this one. Let's see. Let me see if I can just skip over. Oh boy, Anna Ruckel, Anna Ruckel's talking about the wrong therapist. <laughs> I scrolled over to the videos. Okay, hold on. They're writing. Okay. Therapeutic intent versus participant experience. Let's see. 
hold on, they're still writing. I love this AI. They, they give very detailed answers, but they sometimes take a while to write the answers. So hold on a second. I'm taking up your time, guys. No. <laughs> AI, you're taking up my time. Hurry up and answer my question. <laughs> a little comic relief here. Come on, hurry up and write. <laughs> this is practice for live streaming, you guys. Impromptu. All right. Let me see if I can find... Okay. <clears throat> it is crucial for participants to feel safe and supported rather than rushed and pressured and hindered. Yeah, that can make you feel bad. Okay, open-ended questions. Okay, here we go. This is what they asked before. I got it. I got it. Open-ended question. Alternative approaches for asking the question. Instead of directly asking why, the therapist could have framed her question in a more open-ended manner, such as, can you share more about what persistence means to you? This allows a broader range of responses without putting immediate pressure on you to justify the answer. Yeah, I felt like I had to justify my answer. I had to validate it. And I have a problem with self-esteem. I wasn't ready to do that. Okay, encouragement of reflection. The therapist could have skipped over me and gone to the next person and said, I'll give you a few moments to think about it. There's no rush. This would have provided space for contemplation and reduced the feeling of being put on the spot. And I friggin' was. She was literally going like this. I'll, I'll act it out. Okay, I can't can't really uh okay, I'll I'll pretend I'm standing up. Carol, why do you think persistence is a good thing? Me. Um I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think, uh, ma'am. Hold on. Why do you think persistence is a good thing? I I haven't thought about it. I I'm not sure. Um why do you think persistence is a good thing? Come on, you're taking up the group's time. Just, that's when I, I walked out. See you later, I, I need to leave. I don't feel comfortable. Oh. Okay, there's the door, you, you can leave. Just come back. Well, I was too upset to come back. It was almost time to go home anyway, so I came home. Validation of feelings. It's okay if you're having trouble finding words right now. Many people do. Yeah, acknowledge how I'm feeling, you know. Follow up support. If silence ensued after your initial response, instead of expressing frustration about time management, she could have offered support by saying something like, let's take a moment together. I'm here to help you explore this. Or, or maybe just, again, give me, give me a few moments. You know, go to the next person. Don't rush me. Don't pick on me. Normalizing struggle. The therapist could normalize the difficulty in identifying positive traits that by stating that many people struggle with self-affirmation and that's a common experience in therapy. By employing these strategies, therapists can foster an environment where participants feel comfortable exploring their thoughts without fear of judgment or pressure. Yeah. Therapists may aim to facilitate growth through questioning but they must also be mindful of how their inquiries affect participants' emotional states. And remember, you know, you go to a day treatment program, we're dealing with mental illness. We're, deal we're struggling with our minds messing with us already without someone, uh, you know, adding to it. These people are trained therapists. And um, making a mistake, you know, I can forgive someone who admits a mistake more than I can forgive someone uh, acting like they're, they're doing everything perfectly well and... And I should just, you know, I should just lump it, you know. By using more supportive language and allowing space for reflections, therapists can enhance the therapeutic experience and encourage meaningful dialogue among group members. That's the thing, too. They feel, they feel pressured by this time crunch. You know, 45 minutes, 15 people? I cannot reiterate that enough. So, um, let me see if I can uh, copy this and uh, paste it <clears throat> yeah I'm gonna go now I'm not a licensed therapist but I have experience with uh, with depression anxiety uh, complex PTSD and a few other diagnoses 
and um, I may start bringing this up on the on the Zoom chats. Um, our experiences in mental health care, especially if we don't have a lot of insurance or money, you know, sometimes we can get we can get thrown into a system where where providers are a little rushed and stressed and burned out, and we can. Uh, um, end up in a situation that may be potentially abusive or toxic, you know? So, um, that's what happened to me today. I'm going to try to go back in tomorrow, but, um, hear this, everyone. I'm not tolerating any more abuse.